On this day in history, 42 years ago, Congress passes the Trans-Alaska Pipeline Authorization Act, clearing the way for construction of the oil pipeline from Prudhoe Bay to Valdez. Yeah, preparations for which had been in the works, though, long before that day. Laurel Downey Bill, author of the Ant Phil's Trunk Alaska History Series, joins us back on the couch for some story time with Ann Phil. Good morning, Laurel. Good morning. So when did these big dreams of oil in Alaska really get going? Well, even though President Richard M. Nixon signed the Authorization Act for the pipeline on November 16, 1973, many people had been working for a very long time behind the scenes to lay the foundation for that pipeline. Um, experts during the 1960s believed that there was a huge supply of oil on the North Slope, but they also knew that to get that oil to market would prove to be a huge challenge. So at the time, there were two options tops to get that oil to market? That's right. You had air and you had sea. Now, the oil industry had carved air, air uh, strips up onto the North Slope, and they were relying on planes like the Lockheed uh, Hercules C-130s to get their equipment and supplies north. Um, then, in, when Prudhoe Bay was discovered in 1968, you had 11 C-130s flying between Fairbanks and the North Slope that routinely carried 24 ton loads. Wow, so I think the saying is something like one if by air, option two by sea, something like that. Tell us about that sea option. Well, the sea option was only available a couple weeks out of the year because of the sea ice. Mm -hmm. So one gentleman by the name of John C. Miller, also known as Tennessee Miller, decided to prove that he could take Caterpillar tractors from Fairbanks and get them up to the North Slope by land. Okay, so it sounds like a very Alaskan kind of risk. How'd it play out? That's right. In the winter of 1964, Mr. Miller organized a caravan of uh, Caterpillar tractors, and he took them from Fairbanks up through Anaktuvik Pass. Now, he and his drivers faced frigid temperatures, frequent equipment breakdowns, and um, other hazards like trying to cross some of the rivers. Uh, but they did make it to the North Slope 40 days later, but only 18 of those days were actual driving days. The rest were spent repairing equipment, waiting out bad weather, and then facing some other hazards along the way. I don't even enjoy driving up the Glen in winter. I, I can't even imagine <laughs> making that. I mean, it'd be safe to say that that expedition for lack of a better term, <laughs> paved the way for oil exploration here as we know it? Yes, Miller proved that you could travel by land to get from Fairbanks up to the North Slope. And so um, that route that he made eventually became the Hall Road and then later named the Dalton Highway for James Dalton, who was an engineer. Now, his father, Jack Dalton, was one of Alaska's early er, explorer er, um, adventurers. So um, construction crews then, once that route was proved that it was feasible, they carved out 400 mile road from Fairbanks through Anaktuvik Pass to get to the North Slope to haul the supplies. And the rest is history. Yes, the rest is history. The, once Congress approved the construction, workers went to, to work building that 800 mile pipeline from the North Slope down to Valdez. It was an engineering phenomenon. Um, and I talk about that in my newly released book, Ant Phil's Trunk, Volume 5, which just came out last week. So it's filled with the stories of the pipeline days and all of the challenges that those folks faced.